There are many ways to answer probability questions, and the first one we're going to examine is called a simulation. The example we're going to use um, involves a promo contest hosted by Pepsi, where um, some of the caps of their 20-ounce bottles said, please try again, and others said, you're a winner. Pepsi advertises with the slogan, one in six wins a prize. Your statistics class wonders if the company's claim is true, so to find out, all 30 students go to the store and each one buys a bottle of, I'm going to say, pop. First time I said that in Pennsylvania, my students just completely forgot that we were in math class and we had to stop and talk about all the weird things I say. But anyway, out of the 30 students, two of them get a cap that says you're a winner. So the question is, how many winners would you expect to get in a class of 30? And is that guaranteed? Um, so if their slogan is that one in six wins a prize, we would expect that there would be five winners in a class of 30 because one sixth of 30 is five. Now that's not guaranteed, we would expect about five winners in the class. Now we only saw two winners in our class, and our question that we want to answer is, is Pepsi telling the truth? Is it really a one in six chance, or is it really smaller than that? Because in our class of 30, we would expect to see five winners, and we only saw two. So, main idea, is Pepsi telling the truth? To answer this question, we're going to be performing a simulation. A simulation is just one way of solving a probability question. We're basically going to come up with a model for this um, pop contest, and we'll see how often we get only two winners out of 30. So here's the premise for this simulation. We are going to assume that Pepsi is telling the truth. So that's our initial um, assumption, and we're going to see if they're actually lying. If they're telling the truth, what's the probability of getting two or fewer winners in a class of 30 purely by chance? This is a little bit like the scope of inference example that we did in the last unit where we start out by assuming that um, the one in six is accurate and we're going to see if that's accurate, how likely is it that we'd only have two winners in a class of 30. Now we don't want our students to buy bottles of pop over and over and over to see how often we have two winners. We want to come up with some kind of device to model the scenario. So what could we use to model a one in six probability? If we were in person, we could use dice, and that would be very convenient because on a die, is it dice or die? The plural form is dice. Honestly, my biggest struggle as a statistics teacher, other than understanding how baseball works. We could use a die because on a die, there are one, two, three, four, five, six options, um, and so there's, there's our one and six. But let's just say you're at home and you don't have a, a die or a pair of dice. Um, we could use a random number generator like our calculator. So what we have to do is assign certain numbers to be losers and certain numbers to be winners. So here's what I think is like the simplest way of doing this. We could generate random digits from 1 to 6, and we could designate number 1 to be a winner, and 2 through 6 would be losers. So in number 3, it says to execute your plan from question 2 30 times to imitate the process of the students in your class buying bottles of pop. So to do this, we're going to get out our calculators. Oh, and we're going to get our chargers. Hold on. Okay, we're going to go to math, PRB for probability, and do rand int. Now the first two numbers you put into rand int are lower and upper. We want a number between 1 and 6, so I'm going to do 1 comma 6, and I want 30 of those numbers, so I'm going to do comma 30. And this gives me my class of 30. Now we decided that 1 represents a winner and anything else is a loser. So I'm just going to click through here and count how many winners we have. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh my gosh, 8 winners. Okay, just going to jot that down. Okay, uh, they want us to do this 2 times, so let's do that again. I've already typed this in, so I just have to hit enter. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, again. Whoa. Okay, I just realized there's a typo. I don't want you to do this 30 times. Just don't, don't do that. Just two times is enough. Once you have those two rounds of the simulation, you're going to use this Google form to enter um, the number of winners that you got each round, and then you're going to look at the spreadsheet to see the responses. You can make a quick dot plot, just a sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect, and then try to answer questions 7 and 8 
as usual with some of these activities, um, my answers are going to be different than yours because I am doing this on, what day is it? July 17th. And you are probably not doing this on July 17th, so you'll have probably more data than I do. Um, but pause the video, do 5, 6, 7, and 8 on your own. So at the time of filming, here's what my distribution looks like. I know it's not a dot plot. Google Sheets is a little annoying about that. Um, but it's essentially a dot plot. It's just the dots have morphed into bars. I just copy-pasted that over here. Now, at the time that I did this, there were only 22 trials. I'm not going to lie. 20 of those were me um, just doing this activity while I was watching that Will Ferrell Eurovision movie. <laughs> so for me, um, there were four times where our class had two or fewer winners. So there was one time where no one won, one time where one person won, and only two times where two people won. Total, there were 22 trials at the time of filming. Um, you can see that most of the time we did have five winners, which is kind of crazy because that was what we expected. And usually we had within one or two winners of what we expected. You know, we were between three and seven. So 18% is the probability that we get two or fewer winners in our class based on this simulation. Number eight asks us if we have convincing evidence that Pepsi is lying. Now for me personally, 18%, it's small, but it's not that unlikely. So at the time of filming, based on the data I have, this does not convince me that Pepsi is lying. I think our class just got a little bit unlucky. It is possible to get two or fewer winners in a class of 30. There's an 18% chance that could happen. Now, if you are doing this sometime in the future and your probability is like less than 5%, that's some convincing evidence that Pepsi is lying. Let's say that by the time you watch this, there have been 100 trials instead of just 22, but no one else has gotten two, one, or zero winners. So there's still only four people that have two or fewer wins. That'd be four out of 100, only a 4% chance of getting two or fewer winners. That would be extremely unlikely and very weird, and I would be extremely suspicious of Pepsi. But 4 out of 22, 18%, it's not that unlikely. I'm not suspicious of Pepsi. If this percent was under 5%, I would probably be suspicious. So what we just did was called a simulation. It's basically imitating chance behavior based on some kind of model, and you can use any random kind of element. You could use dice, cards, um, a coin flip, a random number generator. I would say a random number generator is the most common because uh, you have one on your calculator. And it's important to note that your conclusion is based on that simulation. It's not a definitive answer to the question that you asked. It's based on this simulation, here's an answer. And you can see that in the fact that everyone who does this video is going to have a slightly different answer because everyone will have a different number of trials. When you do a simulation, you always want to hit the four-step process. Now, this four-step process is going to come up so much. I can't take credit for this. It comes from um, one of the most popular statistics textbooks. It's called different things in different places, but if you follow this process for most kind of free response type questions, it ensures that you won't forget anything that the College Board is looking for. Okay, so here's the four-step process. State, plan, do, conclude. I'm not going to give you an acronym for that because you're going to do it so much that you'll just remember. But let me show you each of the steps here. State is where you just ask the question that you want to answer, which seems kind of silly, uh, but it actually is really important. So here we go. Number one, state. They actually did for us in these directions. What is the probability of getting two or fewer winners in a class of 30 purely by chance? There, we've stated the problem. Plan is the second step. And that's where you outline, I'm going to generate this many numbers, these numbers will represent this, these numbers will represent this, ready, go. Or I'm going to use a dice, or I'm going to use a coin, or I'm going to use cards, or whatever it is you're using. But that's the plan step. All of this was the do step, which is step three. Now we are using collective data from everyone watching this video and taking the time to submit. Um, if you were on your own and doing something by hand, like on a free response college board question, you would want to do like five or six trials by hand, and that's it. That's obviously not perfect, and you're not going to get great results, you're just kind of showing that you know the process. In reality, if you want to do a good simulation, you'll use computer software to do a bunch of trials. Step four is conclude, and that's where we just made our conclusion, where we said, 
Huh? I don't think Pepsi's lying. I don't see any convincing evidence that they're wrong. In the next example, it's kind of structured for you with different parts, but if it's just an open-ended, like, do a simulation, really focus on these four steps. All right, why don't you pause the video and try the check your understanding problem, and then we'll go over the answer together when you're done. I got in trouble once with some um, students who were athletes because I suggested that streaks weren't a thing, and they strongly disagreed. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, they wouldn't like this example. So we're going to go through the four-step process. State one was done for us. It says to estimate the probability that a 50% shooter who takes 30 shots in a game would have a streak of 10 or more. That's state. For plan, what we're going to do is generate 30 numbers. Each number represents one of the shots that the player takes. I just said make one a make and two a miss. That will represent this 50% probability that the shooter makes or misses. Let's say that we knew the shooter made 70% of their shots. Just as another example, if, if we knew that the player could make 70%, I would say that the numbers 1 through 7 represent him making the shot, and 8 through 10 represent missing, because that's going to preserve that 70% probability of making the shot. But this player is making 50% of shots, so it's really easy to just do 1 and 2. Now, we didn't actually have to do the do step here. It was done for us. Um, so here's 50 trials of this simulation. The two dots above 9 indicate that there were two trials where the player had a streak of 9. So if we did this on the calculator, you would just have to click through and count how many 1s in a row there are. It'd be kind of a pain. It's nice that StatsMedic has provided the data for us. 3. A conclusion. The probability of having a streak of 10 or more shots is 1 out of 50 because there was only one time that they saw a streak of 10 out of 50 trials. 1 out of 50 is 2%. That is extremely unlikely to happen by chance. So I would conclude that this player is not streaky. Usually I say if something's less than 5 or 10%, I would call that unlikely, and if it's more than 5 or 10%, I would say likely. One thing I want to mention about simulations is it's really important to not overlook the state step. I know it seems silly to just state what you're trying to find, but it can really help you process what is a lot of information. They gave you a ton of stuff in this problem. 30 shots, streak of 10, 50%, uh, 10 or more shots. If you can just simplify it to one question, it'll really help you figure out, okay, I need this many numbers, I need to decide which numbers represent this, um, it'll help you plan a lot better if you can clearly state what the problem is that you're trying to solve.